Hi, I'm Morgan Doremus with RT Book Reviews, and I'm here today with YA author Lucianne Diver. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. I'm Thank super you. excited because this week you had um, your book release. It's called Revamped. Mm -hmm. It's in the Vamps or Vamp series, I yeah. guess is what you'll call it. Um, maybe you want to catch the uh, the viewers up a little bit on what happened in the first book. What are we getting ourselves into? Okay. Well. Um, you know, Gina is a teen fashionista who goes from chic to eek when she's turned into <laughs> a vampire spy. Um, the guy she ends up necking with in the broom closet at the after prom party <laughs> and uh, ends up having to claw her own way out of the grave, totally ruining her manicure, and um, discover, discovers to her eternal horror that she's become one of the undead and has no way to fix her hair and makeup. <laughs> so there, there is a scene in, in the second book where she actually, she has to start practicing where, putting on makeup without the mirror because mm -hmm. she has no more reflection anymore. Right. And this really bothers her because mascara is impossible to put on without a mirror. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and sometimes even with a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she's a, she's a total fashionista and that really doesn't change as the series goes on. But what does change is in the beginning, um, she's pretty shallow because life has never really tested her. Um, She's popular and she dates football players and everything else and then she becomes undead and her boyfriend, um, her sire and the guy who changed her into a vamp who has really hot blue eyes and she discovers she has real feelings for is a geek. and. Um, she, uh, but, but a geek in a great way. Oh, yeah. Very brainy, very intelligent, very witty. Yeah, my I call kind of my geek. hot geek. Yeah. yeah, there you go. My husband's a hot geek, so, you know, <laughs> I, I have some experience there. <laughs> it works. Yeah. And, um, but because her social order is turned on its head and her life is turned on its head and everything else, um, she really goes, you know, through something. She really discovers who she really is, and who she really is is kind of a leader. Um, kind of kick butt, kind of, um, you know, life throws lemons at her and, you know, she'll bat it out of the park and it'll become lemonade when it splats on the other side. So she's kind of got her own way of doing things. Um, in fact, there's a, a prophecy that she is chaos and she demonstrates that very well during the book. So she wouldn't necessarily um, kick butt in the same way anybody else would. She uses hairspray as a flamethrower, for instance, but um, she definitely does kick butt and she finds that she cares about people more than she's comfortable with. She's kind of kept that inside her whole life. So she discovers a lot about herself. She does become less shallow as the book goes on and more uh, focused on other people, although she still is a little bit in denial about that because she's not really comfortable with that. Absolutely. So in the second book, we have uh, this great scene where she's sitting it down and she's talking. She's now working for kind of this secret government agency. Mm -hmm. And there's this great scene where she's kind of in her head making fun of these agents who are trying to explain to her her, her mission. Yeah. That she has to go and infiltrate a high school where these like really weird things are happening. You know, these supernatural things mm -hmm. are happening. And it's and I love how she's snarky, but not in a real mean way. More in just she's just kind of bored. So she's kind of almost entertaining herself. Yeah. And I I just I really like that because it really I think shows who she is as a person. She can be snarky, and she can be kind of you know that that girl. But on the other hand, you're right; she does really care for other people, and that definitely comes out. Yeah, I mean the way she defines the difference um, between mean girl and fashionista is she was trying to beautify, not belittle the world. One you know <laughs> one snarky comment one, at, one a time, at a time, basically. Yes. Yeah. So, so that's the difference, you know, is that the mean girls, I think, live to be little, and she just, well, wants to make the world a little prettier. So, you know. And, and we, get, we get in the second book, we get a little bit of a triangle, because she mm -hmm. is, when, when she did become and dead, she was pretty young. She's still in her, in her teens. Mm -hmm. And so I think even though she does have her, her boyfriend, Bobby, um, she's still maybe searching out some limits. She's still, you know... Just because she's dead doesn't mean she doesn't want to date. Right. <laughs> yeah, she discovers in book two that goths are people too. And um, there, which she didn't know because hell, no color palette to speak of. I mean, that's just, um, you know, she can't even conceive of no sparkles and spangles and gem tones. But um, there's this goth guy, Ulrich, who I think I fell in love with a little bit. So I had to have her kind of be a little torn and kind of fall for him a little bit too. Um, and I won't tell how it turns out, but um, yeah, there's definitely a, a, a sort of triangle and some romantic tension going on there. And um, I have a really kind of soft spot for Ulrich too. And I think that that's so true is that even, even if you do, you know, love somebody or whatever, you don't suddenly become blind and deaf and dumb to the rest of the world. They're going to be, you know, kind of temptations and ooh sparkly over here, especially <laughs> Gina with the ooh sparkly. Um, and Ulrich's not necessarily sparkly, but he's kind of charismatic. 
Definitely charismatic. And there's a whole group, in fact, that, that Org belongs to that are just really, you know, fun teens that might not be your first choice to hang out with because they are a little bit dark and moody and so on. Mm -hmm. But once you get to know them, you get to realize these are really great, great people. And, and I think Gina really recognizes that. And she it gets to the point where she doesn't really want to lie to them anymore. So she kind yeah. of maybe brings them on her side a little bit. Not so much the vampire side, but just let's, you know, work together, I guess. Yeah, that's really true. It kind of breaks her heart when she thinks, yeah, maybe they have something to do with all the weirdness that's going on mm -hmm. in Revamped. Um, and she does have trouble, and she does kind of come to the realization that being a secret agent means she's going to have that trouble a lot. And as we discussed, she does care more than she's really comfortable with. And um, now as a secret agent, she's got to try to pull back even further, mm -hmm. kind of go back a little more to where she was, which was putting up her walls and defenses. And they're just not there so much anymore because they broke down and revamped. Um, and then the third book, Fantastic. See, that's what I was going <laughs> to ask next, the third book. Let's let's hear all about it. Very exciting. Oh, I... I love the third book too. I, you know, I just, I love working with Gina. She's such a great character and so, to an extent she just writes the books themselves. Whenever I hit, you know, a tough part or anything, she just kind of kicks me out of the way and goes, would you let me handle this? And, <laughs> um, and suddenly my action scene is written for me and it's, you know, it's almost like I zoned out for a minute and I came back and I went, wow, I wrote that? I, I feel like she wrote it. But, um, in Fantastic, sort of the real vampires and the lifestylers in um, Tampa, there actually is a very strong vampire community in Tampa, as there are a lot of places, um, kind of neat. And there are some steampunk vampires, which is a lot of fun. Ooh. And uh, also the feds and the fangs kind of meet and have a bit of a showdown. And, and uh, Gina has to decide what side she really falls out on or whether she's on her own side, because both sides are kind of pulling some stuff, um, a little shady. So that's going to be fun. Um, and then they've also, my publisher Flux has bought a fourth book, which is going to be called Fangtabulous, which I have yet to write, but I, I sort of know what I'm going to do there too. Well, fabulous. I know that personally I can't wait, and I know our viewers out there are very, very excited for the next Thank couple you. of books. Thank you. I'm so excited too.